Greetings, my fellow YouTube nurses. I'm up and close. We're talking here. We're going to get very personable, huh? okay? So first question I had was, how do I do a 12-hour shift in the ICU, CVICU, trauma neuro center, anything like that in the critical care unit? And so I said, you know what? That's a good question. Let's roll with the punches. So um, that's one of the questions I got from one of my subscribers. Thank you for subscribing, liking, hitting that, uh, you know, sharing button, and just letting everybody know about my channel, guys. So um, first and foremost, how do you do a 12-hour shift focusing on your patients? So I did a video before, and I put a link on the bottom, how to deal with a 12-hour shift with med surge tele patients. So that's on the bottom. This video, I'm going to talk about critically ill patients in the ICU. So for my night shift nurses and my day shift nurses, when you get up, you better slam that coffee because if you don't, you are going to be hurting when the doctor, family member, the patient, anybody asks you a question, you don't know what's going on, drink that coffee. Stay alert. Drink a 20-hour energy drink. Okay, they're already out. Go buy them. Just kidding. They're five-hour energy drinks, but I'm just saying, drink your Red Bull, your coffee, whatever you need, okay? Just make sure you're on point. When you get report, you definitely have to drink a coffee. I don't care how much it is because if you get report and you're sluggish, you're tired, disoriented, lethargic, you're not going to make any sense. Any, and when the doctor asks you a question, you're not going to know what's going on. So my favorite is Honest Tea. That's the best. It's organic. I'm not trying to sell the item or promote it, but I'm just telling you this is probably the best thing I like to drink. And some, sometimes I'll drink coffee. So night shift or day shift, when you go get your report. Now, for ICU, our reports are head to toe. I'm talking about very thorough, very in-depth. You have to know what's going on with your patients. So it's going to be to us, okay? You can take it however you want it. It's a like five, maybe seven-minute report because we're talking about everything. Patient's history, patient's background, why they got admitted, what's the changes going on, their current vital signs, their uh, neuro, their cardiology, you know, their pulmonary, every system. We just keep going and talk about it and we discuss maybe the plan day, what's going on with the patient, what we need to do to talk to the doctor to change anything. Also, we need to figure out how the patient is going to get better so we can get them out, kick them out like this. Boom! Just get them out. Okay, so to the med search floor, get them better, right? So the the report is going to last a while. So when you get report, sit your, you know, sit your little booty down, get your coffee, be alert, go, what's going, you know, write everything that's very important. I use the four color system pin, the blue, red, black, and green. So when I get report, everything's black already. I use the red for any changes when I'm getting report. And then uh, during the day, I'll use blue color, and that just lets me know what I've done on my shift. So that's what I do for my report sheet, and that's right when I get on shift. And then um, I get my second report sheet on my other patient. Remember, these patients are critically Ill, critically Ill, so you have to know everything, top to bottom. So when you do rounding with a doctor, and they can come at any time, you give them the information, what's going on, what you think we need to do for the patient, and what you know we may add for the patient care. Doctor will love you for that. So um, knock out the reports after you drink your coffee, and that's within the first hour. Right after that, go in there, assess what's going on with the patient. You know, if it's cardio, if it's pulmonary, if it's a multi-system, which usually they are for ICU patients, you have to know what drips they're on. Make sure you know what the drips. Make sure you're in the right patient's room. And when you're checking all the drips, you make sure they're at the right settings, at the right titration mode, at the you know per MD order. And then you also see what drugs they're taking, just to make sure if they're on the drips, if they, if they're urinating every. 30 minutes, you want to make sure what's the urine output is what? 30 mLs or, or less is when you want to call the doctor. 30 mLs or more is perfect. That's what you want for the patient if it's the lowest. Now, the order is going to be completely different. So when you're going before you assess the patient after you get report, definitely go through the orders the last 24 hours. See what's going on with the patient. What have they changed? What have they ordered? What's going on? Read the transcription. That's very, very important, guys. As a nurse, you want to know what the doctor's writing. What's their plan of care? What's their change of condition? What is the plan for them to get out and get better? So you want to go through that. Um, and once you go through the transcription, boom, you have a better signature uh, uh, um, plan of the patient. You know what's going on. So you can go in there, boom, talk to the patient's family, boom, talk to the doctor, what you want to do. And so you do all that. That's probably, I want to say, a good hour. The second hour, and even before the second hour hits, you already went in there, done the assessment on your patient. Now, this don't do a rapid, don't do a quick assessment. You have to go in there and do a thorough head-to-toe assessment. I'm not going to explain how that works. You guys know as a nurse how to do a head-to-toe assessment. Once you do your assessment, you know, we go in, and of course, doctor's going to write new orders, you change, all that good stuff. So you're repositioning the patient, and you have to do that every two hours so they don't, you know, get any bed sores, any... Um, any types of, uh, you know, we don't want anything going on with the patient, so you have to move them. It's always good to do that. And that's probably within the two, maybe three hours. I haven't even charted yet, guys. I know sometimes I um, you want to chart immediately, but first patient care comes, and then after you write everything on a piece of paper, that's when you go ahead and chart it later. But you want to do that first, and then you start charting. I know they want us to do real time, but in reality, in a perfect world, 
that would happen but you know you just have to go in there and so once you get your patient care and all that good stuff you're going back you start charting do your whole head to toe assessment and for us we chart every three hours but the vital signs have to be every 15 every 30 or every hour for it depends on the acuities how high they are for the patient if it's a high acuity patient you're doing it every 15 or maybe every five so like i said look through the orders and then once you know your patient what's going on your hours are going by fast give them bed bath reposition them talk to the doctor and you're on point you're set you know what's going on with the patient and your day should run smoothly this is why i like the icu but you always have to be ready and prepared if it's a DNR or full code for the patient. Always look at those orders. Like I said, y'all, I'm making this short, sweet, hard to beat. Any more questions, you guys? Um, like I said, the link's going to be right here. If you want to look at my other video about med search, uh, tele or patients, assessment, so forth, and how it goes for a 12-hour shift. This video for ICU, I kept it short. We'll, go, uh, we'll just do it one more time. Get your copy. Get your report. Make it short and sweet. Know everything about your patient. Go over the transcription what the doctor wrote, what's the plan of care, change of condition, what they want to do to get the patient better. Go over the orders, 24 hours, so you know what's going and what you're going to get into. Then you assess your patient thoroughly. Check the drips. What are they on? What are they taking? Why are they titrating? What's the per MD order? What is the protocol? And so forth. After that, you go to chart. Talk to the doctor when you do rounds so you know everything what's going on with your patient. The last four, five hours should be a breeze. My fellow YouTube nurses, peace.